Hi guys, it is Howitzer here, and welcome back to part two of the Alien 3 that could have been from Vincent Ward. Let's not waste any more time and jump right back into the story. The group then comes to a hallway before the doorway to the technology room. The hallway is covered in spring-jawed steel tooth bear traps. They are surrounded by the traps and no one is moving. Ripley then pulls up a wooden plank from the floor and begins to set the bear traps off, making a clean way for them to move on. This is when the alien attacks, with its appearance adapted to look like wood so it could blend into the surrounding. Shortly after making its presence known, it actually changes back into the standard alien look before attacking. When the alien attacks, Anthony steps back onto a bear trap on his left angle now finding himself in the same predicament as he was in his vision. Everyone else runs to the door as the alien confronts Anthony. Just when the alien looks like it's about to attack him with its inner jaw, it spits a thin stream of acidic saliva onto Anthony's eyes, melting them instantly. Meanwhile, Ripley is frustratingly typing at a keyboard, trying to gain an entrance into the technology room when she is finally able to make the door open. At this time, Brother John is trying to help make the alien let go of Anthony when the alien picks up John by the waist with his tail. Luckily for John, he grabs a trap and brings it up just as the alien is about to snap its jaw on his face. He pushes the trap over its jaw and it snaps down. The alien screams in agony and whips its head, spraying blood all over causing small pools of fire on the wooden floor. The four of them then make their way into the room and shut the door with the alien outside. They find that the technology inside the room is not as advanced as they thought, finding windmills blowing air throughout the structure. Anthony notes though that he can feel water pumps below the surface and they are most likely pumping air and or water throughout the station. Beyond the fires that the alien has caused, the station was becoming colder over time and the monks were burning wood in order to keep warm. These fires, along with the fires from the alien, are putting soot into their small artificial atmosphere, causing a greenhouse effect that is going to kill them. While the abbot is trying to convince Ripley that she has brought the end upon them, she is trying to explain to them that they were never meant to last in the first place. The sheer design of this station wouldn't have lasted long. Suddenly, while they are arguing, a trickle of blood begins to run from the abbot's left ear. He quickly starts spouting off quotes about the woman bringing evil, when out of nowhere his head explodes. We then get to see an alien headburster, with this corpse still standing and flailing about, while his head is replaced by a small chestburster's head. Just imagine a body walking around with a tiny alien head on top of it. It just sounds crazy to me. Anthony the android all through this script has been carrying a staff for protection, so Ripley takes the staff and swings it at the alien, hitting it like a child hitting a baseball from a tee. The chestburster flies across the room, slams into the wall, but when it hits the floor it finds an opening in it and disappears. Ripley and Anthony then begin to discuss the differences in the alien that is hunting him here and the aliens that she dealt with on LV-426. Ripley states that the aliens may have always looked a certain way because before when they saw them they were always in the same environment. Maybe now that we're seeing the alien in a new environment, we're getting to see a yet unseen stage in their development. This may even explain the type of alien that was born from the sheep and the headburster. Ripley then states that it may even be possible that the alien can deposit different types of eggs and that the chestburster is probably dormant until the host eats stating that the first one she ever saw came out of Cain right after he started to eat. It's right at this horrible moment when she realizes that she hasn't eaten and she's had a nagging pain in her stomach and chest ever since she arrived. She keeps this to herself though and moves on. They make their way to the underground sea that splits the space station in half. It's over five miles across. From here, Ripley is able to see light coming into the room and asks John where the light is coming from. This is where John explains how they use the lenses that they make to move light throughout the station. Anthony, the injured android, had decided to stay in the technology room as his injuries were too severe for him to move forward. Almost the entirety of his face had melted away from the acid, including his eyes. While the team is moving to find their way across the lake, we go back to Anthony where he can be seen sitting on the floor talking to himself. He is saying now 
that the seer can only see what God wants them to. Forty years on a planet of monks, and he has finally found religion. As he is saying this, the alien comes up to finish him off, but before it can, we move back to the team who is now on a small wooden raft making their way across the lake. The camera would then pull back to reveal an alien swimming in the water beneath them. The alien does not attack here and they're able to make their way to a series of ladders and begin climbing up. They finally come to the smoldering field in which the alien had killed the monks earlier. Heaven has become hell while fires burn everywhere and much is already burned around them. This is when Ripley and John find monks impaled on their own pikes entangled together in an alien cocoon material. They quickly move past this and make their way into the glass making factory. They meet up with John's dog, Matthias, who has been waiting for them. Suddenly, the alien shows up in the doorway, and it's in bad shape from all the damage caused by the traps in the hallway. Its tongue is just hanging out, all torn up, and parts of the alien look wooden, while other parts look like it's trying to still mimic the wheat. It's also carrying Anthony's waterlogged limp body when it pops off his head and tosses the corpse at Ripley's feet, with her noting that she swears it's trying to smile at her. The alien is moving slowly and having trouble getting to them while the dog tries to draw its attention away. John gets the alien's attention while Ripley shoves the blowing iron into the alien's torso. The alien spins in a circle, blood spraying around it, causing a circle of fire around him, igniting the sacred books in the room that were so important to the monks. While John is trying to grab books, with Ripley trying to get him to get the heck out of there, the alien falls through the floor into the molten glass vat below. Before Ripley and John can make it out, the alien jumps out of the glass, still covered in the molten material. We can even see parts of the alien trying to mimic the molten glass look. They are then able to dump a take of water onto the alien which causes it to instantly cool and burst into a million pieces. It is then that Ripley grabs onto her stomach and falls to the floor. They then try to make their way back to Ripley's escape pod to use it to get off of the burning space station. As they are leaving, Ripley tells John that he is going to be the only one leaving as she is going to stay because she now knows that she has an alien inside of her. Earlier in the story, John was looking through various books at images of the devil when he suddenly came to one page that interested him. They didn't show what was on the page, only noting that his eyes lit up when he saw it and that he took the book with him. We then cut to a page in that book with a medieval etching showing a monk vomiting up the devil. Next, Brother John closes his eyes and then closes the book. He then pours some water into a small plastic cup and retrieves a small pouch of herbs of which he pours into the water. He tells Ripley that this is going to make her well, but it's going to make her sick at the same time so she needs to shut up and drink it. Ripley then lays down and takes in the drink. Next, Brother John swings his leg over her, straddling her, and then presses his hands together almost like he is in prayer. He then balls him up into one fist and starts to slam his fist into her stomach, which causes Ripley to vomit up a thick mucus-like substance. Her back then arches and she screams a loud gut-wrenching wail. You can even see her torso bulge as the creature is forced upwards. John then pushes up under her ribs, forcing the chest burster up through her throat, and then John crosses himself, takes a deep breath, lowers his mouth to hers, and inhales and exhales as if performing CPR. We then see the alien slither from Ripley's mouth into John's where it disappears down his throat. Ripley then asks John why he did it, and he says this is the only way, and then falls to his knee with his book falling onto the floor. Ripley then sees the etching and understands what he just did. She enters the escape pod with his dog and then leaves while John stays to burn up on the space station. The funny part to me is at the end of the script it says credits roll dot 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 then it says teenager in the back of the movie theater shouts it's in the dog. So this was a crazy ending to me. The only thing I didn't get that I know they would have to change is why Brother John took the alien then into his throat. If it was already being forced out of Ripley, let it go onto the ground and just let it get away so you can both get out of there. But I do think they wanted John to sacrifice himself in this role to save Ripley, and that's why they went that way. 
we can see a lot from this script making its way into the real Alien 3. First off, this was the first script to feature Sigourney Weaver, as the other scripts were made when she was possibly not going to return to play Ellen Ripley. The idea of an all-male group of people also came from this script, later on turning into prisoners instead of monks. This script was also the first to have Ripley carrying an alien chestburster, and we see the ending here of the final version of Alien 3, except they used the glass factory in water to kill the alien instead of molten metal in water. Sigourney Weaver had told them that she didn't want guns to be involved in the third movie, so the script idea of using monks was a pretty good idea to fit that type of story. We also get the first xenomorph that was a quadruped due to the creature that it came from. Although I'll have to note that even though it wasn't weird for an alien to use a sheep for a host, it was extremely crazy for the alien to have some kind of wool on its body. I would still have to state again that the idea of the wooden planet, although not practical, was amazing to me and I would love to see how this would be done on the big screen, if only to see what the space station would look like. I have to admit, even though we haven't seen other aliens do it before, having the alien mimic its surroundings was a cool idea, but I don't think it fit in well with the rest of the Alien franchise. It was still a great read, and I'm glad I found this script by Vincent Ward. Sigourney Weaver was quoted as saying that the elements were there for this script, but there was not enough of Ripley's story in it. Even so, Ward was still given credits for the final film. It's important to note that when I cover these scripts, that they usually are not polished yet. Many of the writers only have a few weeks to write these, and often they are given directions on things that need to be in the movie from the producers. So keep that in mind when judging these scripts. The different takes on the alien were a bit off base, so I can see why the big changes didn't make it to the final film, as well as the android Anthony. I found his character really cool, but the way he was portrayed was a little off, with him being tired and the way he reacted to his wounds. It was almost too human, although they did note that he had a human-like brain. The way the alien wanted to torment Ripley was another nice touch, but it still didn't fit in with how the aliens act normally in the franchise. All in all, the script is a really fun read, and I really encourage you guys to go online and search for it so you can read it yourself. So what do you guys think of this treatment? Do you like it better than what we got in Alien 3? How do you feel about the concept of a mostly wooden space station full of monks? Let me know down in the comments, and as always, if you guys like the video, if you could leave a like, it helps out the channel so much and I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, why not subscribe for all the future alien goodness to come? Thanks again for watching everybody, take care, and I will see you next time.